Okay, so this is the uh, the coffee page step of the Stupendous Styles Challenge solution. Uh, if you take a look at the screenshot I gave you, uh, brown background, three buttons that have a background uh, style. Looks like uh, we'll need to work on that somehow. Looks like we have one, two, three rows, and then I know we're going to have a, another row here with, that'll just push everything up. Uh, with star sizing. Uh, actually, you could do this number of ways. I think I just centered these three together. I think I put them in a, um, a stack panel and then centered the stack panel. So uh, any way you want to just move them over, that's fine with me. Looks like we're going to use the same spacing, the same graphic and everything So uh, for the logo. So that might be a perfect opportunity to create another style, a style at the application level. And it looks like we have some text here as well. We might be able to put borrow that from the previous um, from the previous video and put that in the application level style as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, you can see in the instructions we get uh, quite a bit of instruction around this in number six. The file menu contents. Uh, what I want to do right now is work with this right here. Grab that color. And uh, we'll s in the coffee page.xaml, I'm going to change that, first of all. So I know I'm going to need um, just, just rows for my implementation. You might use columns. That's fine. Uh, let's do um, grid.row definitions or definition height equals auto. And I'm going to do one, two three of those and then the fourth one we'll do star sizing okay very good so I know I'm going to need my image now at this point I have a decision to make do I basically copy and paste from the donut page or do I take the step of grabbing out all the stuff because I'm going to reuse it all and putting that into a style so let's do that I'm going to go to the app.xaml I know I'm going to use it on multiple pages so this is the right place and place for it and we'll create a resources section and create a new style and this will be uh, the target type will be image and then the uh, the key equals um, white logo style probably could come up with a slightly better name than that uh, I'm actually gonna paste in what I have on my clipboard uh, setter uh, property and value. All right, source width. It's got to be uh, what 150, and then the margin. Twenty, 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 zero, and then finally grab that and put that there. Let's try it here. give us what we want there. I'll come back to that in a minute. I know also that uh, I'm going to grab this stuff from the text block and create a style out of that as well. So I'm going to grab um, the font size, foreground, and margin. And I'll go to the AppSaml. And I'll just call this style text block. I'm going to call that Label text block style. Again, naming things is so hard. So, if you want to name it something a little more descriptive, please, please be my guest. All right, font size 18. And uh, foreground. white and then margin and that'll be 20 20 20 zero all right 
that should be good. Let's grab that, and I'm going to start using these all over the place. Um, so here on the donut page, let's get rid of a lot of this stuff. And I'm going to set the style equal to static resource. Great. Let me just grab that out here. Yeah, I'm going to use it here as well. Okay. And then um, style here, static resource. Wait, what was that? Nice. All right. So before I go any further, let me make sure that it compiles, that nothing changed with our donut page, and that our copy page is off to a good start. It looks like um, I need to create another setter to set the horizontal alignment left. So uh, let's go here and um, horizontal alignment value left, and that should take care of that issue. And we'll look at that next time we run it. Okay, back to the coffee page. Um, yeah. So in this case, I know I'm going to need buttons. I need three of them. Oh, and these buttons are special buttons, right? So I can't just do the self-enclosing there. I need that. And um, these buttons are going to have flyouts, right? So flyouts. And then we want a menu flyout. And then we want menu flyout items. And here's where we use those lists. Now, I just I happen to have them off screen, so I can see them here. Um, but I'm going to basically do that. And um, I'm going to set the content equal to roast on this one. I'm going to set the uh, I'm going to set margin to 10 all the way around. So I'm just going to set it once. I don't know if I showed you that technique, but when you set it once, it will set 10 on all four sides. Just FYI. And then uh, the foreground of this button is going to need to be white. Now that reminds me, what I wanted to put them inside of was a stack panel. So let's go ahead and set that up as well. And um, the stack panel is going to be in row two. So grid.row equals one. And I recall telling you that uh, I set the horizontal alignment to center on that. So let's go ahead and set that as well. Oh, yeah. And um, we need to set the orientation equal to horizontal as well. Great. Okay, we're off to a good start here. Now, uh, since one of the requirements was to use styles as often as possible, I'm going to use a gratuitous style here. Mm -hmm. Don't really need a style here, honestly, um, but I'm going to use one anyway. So, um, page.resources, and we're going to add a new style. Uh, Type, whoops, target type button, and the key will be um, flyout button style. Again, I could probably come up with a much better name than that. So then we need some setters. Yeah, I'm just going to paste that right there. Property and value. at the margin 10 and then the foreground it's going to be white oh. and now we can use the file button style nice so style equals static resource style. Okay, great. 
So I need three of these. And you know what? I think, oh, I got the margin already. I'm good. So uh, let's grab one, two, and three. The second one will be, uh, what, sweetener? And then the third one will be for cream. All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, change the text on each of these. So this is going to be dark, and this is going to be uh, medium. All right, then next up we want to go sweetener is none and sugar, and we'll get rid of the third mini flight item. And then the last one will be 2% uh, milk and whole milk. All right, and then what I want to do is add click event handlers, but I'm going to kind of group them together so each of the three or two menu item flyout my items will have the same click event handler. So click equals, and I'm going to create this myself. I'm going to call this roast click, and I'll just copy this for all three. And then we'll do the same thing with the sweetener, except we're going to rename this. To a sweetener, and, and then finally, cream click. All right, let's um, put our mouse cursor in the new name of the new event and hit F12 to uh, create that stub in our code behind. Great. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Got a little unfinished business though here in the Xam oops in the coffee page XAML. And that is that below all of this, I want to add uh, the you know the coffee uh, little label there. So um, stack panel, and I'm going to put these uh, in an orientation equal to horizontal, and this will be in grid dot row equal to. And so I'm going to have two text blocks and the first one will be just um, static uh, copy and I'm gonna use reuse one of the styles since again that is really the point of all this static resource label text block style perfect and then the second text block will be we'll give it a name because we're gonna wanna access it programmatically and then uh, style equals, and uh, we'll do the same static resource label text block style. And I think that's all I need to do there. So we should be in good shape on that side of things. All right, so in the coffee page, here's what we want to do. Uh, my thought is that um, in each of these cases, we're going to we're going to retrieve off what was selected, and then we want to rebuild that result that we'll put in the result text block. So when I, uh, I think all three of these methods need to call a common helper method to do the assembly of that, that result message. So uh, I'll just do a private void uh, display result like so. We'll get to that in a moment, but here's kind of how each of these will work. Uh, we're gonna use the routed event args for uh, the click event to determine which menu item was the one that was selected. So here we go. Var selected equals sender. Well, I'm sorry, we're not gonna use the event args, we're gonna use the sender. That's will tell us which one was clicked. Okay, sorry about that. And then um, we'll say, we'll cast it to uh, type menu flyout item. Now we should have what we need uh, but I'm going to need to pass some data to this display result. So since I need to kind of keep state across all three of these button clicks, I'm going to add some private uh, variables. So we'll do something like this. Uh, roast 
And you'll see how I use this in just a minute here. So you might be like, what? What are you doing here? Trust me. Okay. So here's what we do now. We, we set the roast equal to the selected dot text of the many flyout item, right? And then uh, we'll call that display result. So now we just follow this pattern uh, two more times. So I'm copying and pasting. But what we grab off is different each time, right? Um, this time we want sweetener. Isn't that how I spelled it? Sweet, <laughs> sweeter. <laughs> and er. Yeah. Looks weird, but that is correct, I guess. And then um, the cream. Great. Now in display result, what we want to do is, um, you know, ultimately kind of add all of that stuff together. Result text block dot text equals, you know, coffee, or I'm sorry, roast plus um, sweetener plus cream. But it's it's really not that easy. We've got to take a few extra steps here. All right, first up, if the roast is either none or if, uh, if that roast string is, is empty, it hasn't been populated yet, then we want to set the result text block to the word none because you can't just have sweetener or cream without some coffee selected, and then we're just going to exit out of this display result. So uh, if roast is equal to the string none, or, and this is one of my favorite little methods, I don't know why, I just love it. It's got me out of, it, it's just this elegant way of, of handling this situation. Roast, then we're going to set the uh, result text block text equal to uh, none and then we'll just return out of this method great all right so then assuming that uh, we were able to make sure that uh, there's at least something in roast we'll go ahead and set the result text block dot text equals roast all right so we're in good shape there the next thing we need to do now is to check both the cream and the sweetener if the um, if the cream, for example, is not equal to none, and it's not string dot is null or empty cream, so we have something in cream, then we'll add it into the result text block dot text. We'll use plus equal because we want to make sure to t uh, to add on whatever the roast was. We're going to add a plus symbol and some spacing, and then we're also going to add cream, whatever is in that cream variable. Okay, and I need to do the same thing uh, with sweetener. So let me just replace all those. build it all right so let's just test some weird scenarios here all right that makes sense all right none none dark whole milk none dark. Okay, I feel good about this. Uh, I think we've completed that step. So let's continue in the next video. We'll see you there. Thanks.